Let me correct a few things that I have said, and I'm gonna go pretty slowly. This is the upper level, and then we'll go down to the lower level, and we'll keep walking on some of the paths where, that are outside, and we can see some smaller bones. Boy, look at big femurs and arms. So this is just a mash of mixed up dinosaurs. So earlier I said the Green and the Yuma River, I think I even said something like the Moab River, which is what I meant to say was the Colorado, but of course, those rivers didn't really exist back then. Uh, so this is all ancient river. Dinosaurs died in a drought. Uh, carcasses kind of laid on the riverbeds and then the rains came and washed all the bones into the new river. I should say the same river, but with water this time. And so that's what jumbled all these things up. But what preserves them what get, makes them fossils because like really really hard to get a fossil like I think something like the fossil record for humans statistically speaking will be like 55 bones or something like that um, it's really hard to fossilize you need pretty perfect conditions some of those perfect conditions you, you know first of all you can't have any oxygen right oxygen although is our lifeblood it's a corrosive so these all got buried in the muck and the burying of the bones at the bottom of the of the river after the rains is what preserved them and you just don't obviously get this very often or at all and i guess the fossil record in total for dinosaurs in general is just totally sparse even though this is more well obviously this is more bones than i've ever seen and We've got full vertebra here. And you can just see the different sizes and compositions of body structures. Um, so in this period, we have stegosauruses. We have... Uh, I'm going to try to read these off. Drinosaurus, Stegosaurus, Comptosaurus, Apatosaurus, Piranosaurus. Camarasaurus, <laughs> Diplodosaurus, Allosaurus, Ceratosaurus, and Torvosaurus. <laughs> you can see I know my scientific words as well as I know my German words. <laughs> I don't think I've ever mentioned, it's never really come up until now. Uh, I went to archaeology camp in, uh, for two summers in 7th and 8th grade. If you haven't guessed by now, I'm a bit of a geek. Love learning. And I love hiking, so you'd think dinosaurs would be pretty, pretty much on my list. Uh, never really got into dinosaurs, but the types of things I was excavating. Uh, we were in Illinois in the Mississippi Basin, kind of right at the merge of the Mississippi and the Illinois River. And we were digging up, you know, native villages uh, mostly fire pits i mean we were young so there weren't going to be any human bones that we were going to be allowed to excavate uh, we you know didn't get it to, over to any burial mounds but we were able to excavate fire pits and um, building posts and things like that so you know I, I i did it for a lot of hours during those summers in the hot sun and uh, a lot of training went into that. And I love seeing st stuff like this because um, it's really very interesting. And of course, when I look at movies where there's archeologists and people are excavating and they got trowels in their hand, almost never is it accurate, or never are they using, the actors using the trowels properly. Um, you just don't like dig down and pull stuff out. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of scientific notation. So the first time I ever got on a computer was at this archaeology camp because we had to then identify the element that we were excavating. We had to painstakingly measure it uh, in in real space. So we're using datum lines um, and measuring exactly where it is in the field, depth, location, basically, you know, quick GPS, and then we go back to the computer and enter in those coordinates. And then eventually, this was, you know, 1980s, early 80s, so I don't know what they were able to do with the data then, but today you'd be able to build a 3D model very easily. And presumably that's what goes on with the real good stuff here.
All right, I'll tell you, this is pretty neat. I did not expect this, but we're allowed to touch these. We can't, ironically, all the models that are up here, we can't touch the models, the casks, casts. <laughs> but the real ones, we can. And I guess that's because the real ones are, and I can, I can attest to this, these are rocks. Um, I don't feel any, well, these are smoother because more people have touched them, but. Those are rocks. Not a lot of fragility here. Really cool. Uh, if you find yourself anywhere in this part of the country and you've got kids, you've got to come here. Obviously, the kids will go crazy to be able to touch dinosaur bones like this.